Next, we're going to talk about voice modulation. Now, voice modulation is something really special. What it basically, it had its origin in the polymod function of the Prophet 5. And the voice modulation function on the memory Moog is very similar. Um, it is an incredibly powerful means of uh, modulating a sound. And the fact that it exists on these polyphonic synths makes them capable of doing a, a vast variety of timbres and effects. It really infinitely expands the functionality of a synthesizer. So it's amazing to see it here on the memory Moog along with its other incredible functionality. So let's talk about it here. Uh, what are we looking at with voice modulation? Okay, just have a normal sound. We have oscillator three. Now, this is kind of magical and confusing. Uh, what this does is it uses oscillator three as a modulation source. If we use oscillator three as a modulation source without the low setting set, it's an audio range oscillator modulating wherever you, uh, whatever you're directing it towards. So let's have a listen to that first. Basically, it's a very high speed oscillation and uh, it will affect, right now it's affecting oscillator one's frequency. And you can hear the frequency of oscillator one going up, and then you can hear the distortion effects of the particular waveform. And each wave shape is going to affect it differently. And these distortion effects can be useful. Um, for example, we could do something like direct the LFO to um, these modulation effects in the audio range can be useful, but they're often really great for effects where uh, another functionality for us using oscillator three as a modulation source. Well, I mean, we can do a number of things like, for example, we can modulate pulse width modulation with it. You can hear that creates a different timbre. Which is pretty cool. Or two different uh, pulse width modulations. Listen to the richness that adds. Basically creating new wave shapes. Or we can use it to control the filter. Creating some really interesting sounds there. And then any change that we do to oscillator three is going to basically, just like an LFO, it's going to result in a different outcome. Listen to the incredible variety of changes uh, tonal changes that have been created just by me just randomly, you know, pressing buttons. So because the pulse width of oscillator three is, is being changed, that means its wave shape is being altered and that wave shape is being used as a modulation source currently to the filter. So even changing the pulse width is going to result in a timbral change uh, in the way that the oscillator three's modulation affects the filter. So if we, uh, let's say, turned on pulse width modulation of oscillator three, while we're using it as a modulation source,
you get that kind of craziness. I mean, that is amazing. And let's do something even weirder. Let's set that modulation also to control the frequency of oscillator three. So any of these combinations, the more you affect oscillator three, which is basically is a very complex modulation source, the, w the more you modify it, the more it's gonna modify whatever you're directing it to, to create really incredibly complex sounds that, I mean, can't even really be foreseen. All of the different outcomes that could be generated by just this one knob and directing it to various sources, uh, it's just an insane amount of crazy things. And it should also be pointed out that when you use oscillator three as a modulation source, well here, here's a good demonstration of this. Let us now get out of the crazy and put oscillator three in low frequency mode. Now, it is acting as an LFO. Let's direct it to the frequency. Whoa. <laughs> Let's turn off the modulation of oscillator three for right now. Okay, here's the first thing you'll notice. As I place my finger on the keys, the modulation speeds up, and why? Because uh, the keyboard is still controlling the frequency of oscillator three, even when it's in low mode. So the higher you press on the keys, the faster the frequency of the modulation. Some video game sounds there. So if you want really slow modulation, just press a low frequency node. Um, also, we can turn off keyboard control, so the frequency is just consistent. And then, of course, you would change it by changing the octave. Or the frequency using the tuner. Because it has a pretty wide range. And of course, if you decide to modulate with a square wave, the pulse width will affect how that modulation set. The pulse width will affect how that modulation sounds. And then if you just combine all these wave shapes, you're gonna get a modulation wave shape that is unique. Now, I just pressed three keys and something weird happened. It sounded like each key had a different modulation happening to it. That is the real excitement of using oscillator three as a modulation source because there are actually six sets of oscillator three. One for each voice. You can play six notes at a time. That means there are six uh, oscillator threes that exist at any given time. When you use oscillator three as a modulation source, then uh, you actually use all six oscillator threes as a modulation source. And in certain modulations, they're going to be independent of each other in regard to start point and rate and etc. <laughs> So the effects that you get are really unique. See, the modulations are not taking place at the same time. 